All right, guys, welcome back. We've got another Five Guns video here for you today. We're going to be talking about top five 9mm carbines. And uh, I realize some of the guns on the table here aren't carbines yet. One of them's mm -hmm. technically a pistol. However, uh, these are kind of candidates that would make a good carbine, a good uh, suppressor host, possibly a good SBR host. So we're kind of trying to cover a, a kind of a wide gamut of different 9mm carbines. Mm -hmm. Pistol caliber carbines are a lot of fun to play around with. They're awesome to suppress. Uh, they are very handy. They're great for personal defense, great for uh, getting out in the yard and plinking. You know, like me, you know, I cast my own bullets. Mm -hmm. So you can grab a, a, a Lee six cavity gang mold. And if you got a user serviceable uh, suppressor, you can grab your uh, 147 grain bullets, load them up nice and light and get out and have some cheap fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, we're going to go down the list here. They're not in any particular order as always. Um, but I would say one of, you know, number one, uh, the kel Sub-2000 is a very, very popular carbine. Certainly the one you've had for the longest. Yeah, I would say the, uh, the kel probably one of the, the first 9mm carbine uh, type, uh, you know, rifles, or carbine, however you want to look at it. The first carbine I ever really had access to uh, in any kind of number or any amount of time. This one is equipped with a Red Lion rail. Of course, this um, rotates out of the way and allows it to be folded. So if you want to run a red dot or something, you can do so. And then to store the rifle and fold it, simply rotate it out of the way, lock this lock ring down, depress the trigger guard, and it folds in half. And what's neat about that is, you know, it's a little bit less than the overall length of, you know, what's legal. But see, the thing is, this firearm can't be fired in this configuration. So, you know, fold it in half, stuff it in the backpack, right. take it on the trail or whatever you need to do. You got yourself a... You know, I mean, you can stick a 33 round mag in there, like what I've got in my little AR here, we'll show you in a minute, but that's some go. serious firepower. It is. You know? It is, and it's nice and compact. This is a great little rifle for folding up, putting in your backpack. Mm -hmm. If you're out in the wilderness, you want a good little survival rifle. They're very reliable. Mm -hmm. um, all of these are nine millimeters that we're showing you, of course, uh, just like the video title says. Yep. And a uh, good number the, of these take Glock magazines, which yeah, is well, great. They do. Um, the one note on the new kel the Gen 2 Sub 2000s, they've redesigned the gun just slightly. They've got a, a new forend, uh, I think maybe like a new grip uh, mm -hmm. style and whatnot. They still take Glock mags, but they are coming factory threaded. So you can use this as a nice suppressor host. I gotta pick so one of those up. They're pretty neat. We shot it at Shaw Show last year. It's yeah, pretty cool. It was pretty cool. But anyways, moving down the line, no sure. particular order. We got the CZ Scorpion. Now, Eric and I got the first chance to play with one of these um, at the Quiet Riot Earth Day shoot back in uh, spring of last year. And uh, Thompson Machine had their little SBR up here, and that's kind of what prompted Eric to pick one of these up. And we got paperwork in on it right now, but yep. these are just a sweet little gun. They I mean, are, you know, uh, there's a couple of things that I like about this. Now, obviously, this is a pistol. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a Form 1 in on this to get it over into a you know folding stock configuration. But I have to admit, it's, it's a great option, but I do have a couple of complaints. Mm. And, and some of the complaints have been addressed by CZ and some of the newer models. Well, CZ has a newer version of this particular gun that is threaded half by 28 for American, you know, type muzzle devices. This one has some weird 18 millimeter, um, you know, device on the end, which you would think that they would have known better. Uh, but the newer versions do have the half by 28, um, you know, muzzle adapter on it uh, to be able to use your suppressors mm -hmm. and things like that. The folding stock mechanisms for this gun are awesome, but uh, they are very, very difficult to obtain. They are, and I mean, the ones Magazines that you can find are, are difficult to get. Well, the, the stock sets that you can find right now, the 922R compliance sets, right, are like three, four hundred bucks. It comes with like mag know? base plates, followers, a couple of other parts in order to be able to meet parts count yeah. to legally convert this over. Uh, I think it comes with like aftermarket grip and a few other odds and ends too, but the kit is supposed to be like 200 bucks. So what is really cool about the Scorpion is that it's, it's probably one of the least expensive ways that you're going to get an awesome SBR mm -hmm. uh, with a folding stock and a suppressor and get something like that set up. This is probably one of the least expensive SBR candidates um, on the market. Now, likewise, it does kind of suck that the pistol version, kind of what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. But, however, they do have a carbine version coming out this year of the Scorpion. The carbine version did look pretty dang cool. So you could run the carbine version, and I'm pretty sure they're threading those half by 28. Yeah. So if I could give any advice to CZ, I, I doubt they care what I have to say, <laughs> but if I could give them any advice, it would be to you know make the magazines more available, mm -hmm. make the stock sets more available for people that are wanting to uh, 
you know, deal with these things. And it seems that they've taken people's complaints into account with fixing the 18 millimeter threads and doing half by 28. They should have known right out the gate that that's what people would want to do. Well, and that's one complaint that I have with CZ in general is they'll release a gun and they'll sell them like hotcakes and they'll release them at like a nice low price point. And then when they get a bunch of complaints in, they'll fix the problem and then re-release the gun and up the price like they did with the PO7 Duty. <laughs> the one that I had with like crummy finish in the serrations, like really bad fit and finish, crummy sights, but overall a good gun with generous magazine capacity. Then they went back to the drawing board, probably after seeing people like me in my video, and they said, oh, well, you know, uh, yeah, this gun was screwed up, so let's fix it. Oh, and now let's up the price another well, $80, too. Not only too. that, it takes different mags. And it takes different mags. I mean, so what? Anyway, that's, that's off on a different territory. But guys, the CZ Scorpion is a great SBR candidate. It's a great carbine. And for those of you that don't want to go into NFA territory, mm -hmm. you can buy the, the Scorpion in a carbine form this year, mm -hmm. throw your can on it or not, and there it is. Well, what I like so much about these guns, too, is just the simplicity. They're easy to take down. It's just a blowback, so it'll yep. pretty much run everything you they want to throw in there. They don't gas you in the face. That's I mean, one of the things I like is they suppress really yep. well. I mean, there's another gun that we're going to discuss a little bit later on, but we've shot both of them suppressed at this point, and I have to say the CZ suppressed is a much better is a much better gun. It's, <clears> a much it's half host. the cost. <laughs> it's half the cost. Half the cost. But anyways, okay, so... A lot of people, you know, have built like 9mm ARs over the years. They've used magwell blocks, they've used proprietary lowers and such as that, but one of the things I got into a while back was a Glock-fed 9mm, and uh, Lone Wolf uh, distributors, they were producing a uh, lower receiver that was cut for Glock mags, and I bought this receiver probably four years ago with the, you know, idea to SBR and whatnot and set it up just like this, but it took me this long to get the gun done, and I tell you what, this gun has been the bane of my existence for the past, like, three months. Trying to get it set up right, to run right, suppress, it has been a pain. I mean, buffer weights, I mean, I wound up going with like a, a real heavy buffer from heavy buffers. It's an eight and a half ounce buffer with an extra heavy spring to get this thing to run right and be quiet. But uh, I've got it running pretty good now. But this is a five inch barrel, nine millimeter SBR with a tri-lug adapter. So I can run my Liberty Mystic here right. with the three lug adapter on it and just right up under the so, rail, boom, done. With this gun, you have the tack stamp on the suppressor, which is removable and can mm -hmm. be used on any firearm. But then you also have the tack stamp on the short barrel rifle mm -hmm. configuration to contend with. So it's a two tax gun in its configuration, but you have the modularity of being able to take the suppressor off mm -hmm. and use it on different platforms, which is awesome. Yep. His tri-lug adapter, in theory, bam, pull his suppressor off and I can run it on my mm -hmm. MP5 here, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But yeah, this gun, I I kind of went all out on this. I mean, this is like a $2,000 build. I mean, I've got a side charge and ASA upper, so I don't have a T-handle back here for gas to leak out in my face and whatnot. Yep. Pretty much everything is self-contained, comes out of the ejection port. Knight's nice Armament URX4 rail, got an ADCO barrel, the Liberty Mystic X suppressor. I've got Surefire appointments on here, and I've got one of the Surefire uh, Scout lights, the uh, 300Vs, so it's got the IR function on it too, so we can use our night vision stuff out there and that, go out and play that, at night. That rig right there, man, it's kind of hard to upgrade from that. I and mean, it's nice. I will tell you, one thing that I did experiment with was that MVB stock, you know, the, the real compact collapsible stock that they produce. And I tell you, I had some issues with it. I, I, I had some problems with the buffer getting locked in the rear, running it suppressed and whatnot. The buffer's just not heavy enough. The so spring went, was binding up. The spring was binding itself, up. Yeah. It's a two-piece spring assembly. And I, I wanted the gun to be reliable. I mean, it's not like life and death, but I want it to be reliable enough to take out and shoot and play with. But sure. I wound up switching to one of the LWRC, you know, ultra compact stocks. And this is a nice, tiny little setup. I love it. It's yeah. so much fun. Well, I'll tell you what, there there's, seems to be a lot of kind of snake oil around the whole 9mm AR thing and it's like unless you buy a factory Colt or something like that it just seems like the ones that people build especially when you're going to suppress them it seems that mm -hmm. there's a bit of difficulty in getting them to run right but once you get them to run mm -hmm. right they're generally kind of good to go and yeah. there is everything from having to like machine his bolt to accept the Glock magazines and pick up off of Glock magazines yep. Uh, and that's fine. He had a Colt. It was a Colt bolt that you yeah, cut for Glock the, mags. The upper came with a bolt, but see, the Glock magazines, since it's a single stack up top, the, the bottom of the bolt has to be thinner to feed inside that groove there. You yep. can't use just a standard double stack bolt. So I had to yep. have, actually have it machined and whatnot, but it's, it, it's, like I said, been the bane of my existence, but the gun is great. And yep. we were overshooting at 100 yards the other day, and I was nailing that little gopher target. It's, it's an awesome setup. I mean, so, 
That, Super accurate. That gun right there represents kind of what you would consider the upper tier of a 9mm carbine in terms of what you can throw at it price-wise. The kel kind of being on the bottom in terms of uh, features, and but mm -hmm. price too. Now, mind you, when you start getting into something more simple, you're also saving a lot of money. I mean, like this kel as set up can probably be had for like around 650 or so. Yeah. You know, they're I mean, not too bad. Regular I mean, the Red gym. Lion kit is like another 200 bucks. The little brake that's on it, and then the guns, if you're lucky, you can get on them around $400. Yeah, the Gen 4 or Gen 2s are supposed to be about 400 yep. bucks. I mean, just when you can find them. And that, that Scorpion was only like six and a quarter. Yeah. I mean, they're well south of $700, which is awesome. All right, so another kind of top tier build if you want to get into something. Now, if you want to talk about the upper echelon of 9mm Yeah, the upper, the upper echelon of 9mm would definitely be something like an MP5. Mm. Um, this is a Zenith Z5 PSBR. Um, of course, we have a tax stamp on the suppressor and a tax stamp on the short barrel rifle. has a B&T folding stock, which um, I'm a really big fan of B&T. They're a great company. They make awesome stuff. Not so much in the civilian world that much right now, but they are trying to branch off more into the civilian market. They are. Uh, you know, the only minor detriment to running something like this MP5 is the lack of magazine compatibility with an actual handgun. So with an mm. MP5, MP5's MP5. So this magazine is only work in this gun. There's no handgun that will operate uh, this particular magazine. So it's pretty much a one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. But we got a B&T forward grip. All right, and you see you got your charging handle there. I mean, it's got a tri-lug adapter on it, which is pretty cool. Thing locks on there right. nice and tight. It does, almost a little too tight, but not oh, yeah. bad. Let's see. That's it. You got it right? Yep. There you go. It's on there. <laughs> and then we got it topped off with an Aimpoint uh, T2 Micro. I got mm -hmm. this through Optics Planet. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to, to hate that. Yeah, that's a pretty cool setup. Yep. We did do a video on this exact, uh, well, this pistol, mm -hmm. when it was still in its pistol configuration, and the gun shot quite well. Uh, many of the guns you see here are available as a pistol. I mean, you can get the CZ, obviously, is a pistol here. This, is, this I purchased as a pistol, mm -hmm. and then you could also build that into a pistol configuration if, if you wanted yep, to. If you guys That exact to. rig. No tax stamp, just build it as a pistol. Well, if you guys remember, we showed you the little um, nine millimeter pistols that were available through ATI, right? You know, at Shot Show, and that mm -hmm. would make a perfect SBR candidate. It would, you know. I mean, Absolutely. already ready to go. Do your stamp, drop your stock yep. on it, put you a suppressor on there, boom, done. Now, yeah. last but certainly not least, by the least stretch of the imagination, is the JR Carbine. Uh, you guys know that we've been doing some work with these particular guns for quite a while. Mm -hmm. This one is a full rifle configuration. I do plan on form wanting one of these, uh, both the 45 I've got on the mm -hmm. wall over there and this 9mm. Uh, it takes lot mags, so it's a Glock fed carbine, 9mm. Interesting thing about the JR is the modularity. Mm -hmm. So with a bolt change, magwell change, barrel change, you can swap this, this gun to different calibers, no problem. So you could order one gun order all the cartridge or the caliber conversions and literally have a gun in everything from 40 cal, 357 sig, uh, 45 ACP and nine millimeter. I don't think they're doing any 10 millimeter stuff, but uh, they, they might, they might eventually. So we, we might eventually. This one is a, a takedown. So the way it's set up is it has kind of a Uzi style configuration. I mean, the barrel drops right off. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can see it's outfitted with the Tyrant. This one's a Tyrant 45, but I do have a nine on the way for it. And it's basically like a little index mark. You line the barrel back up, just like on an Uzi. Da Uzi. Uzi 9 millimeter. Da Uzi 9, da 9 millimeter. Uzi. So this is set up as a takedown, but you can also run like a Yankee Hill style rail. Mm -hmm. So when this thing ends up getting SBR'd, what'll probably happen is I'll go back to the larger Yankee Hill rail and I'm gonna put it uh, on a milling machine and cut it down nice and small to the exact length I want and then we'll run a five and I'll actually take this barrel shorten it to five and a half inches on the lathe mm -hmm. and then thread it half by 28 and then that way I'll have a configuration very similar to what Chad has but here's the kicker for about half the price mm -hmm. uh, now that doesn't mean that you know it's inferior anyway it's just that his his is set up for a more of a true AR-15 ergonomic whereby the, ma the manual of arms of this particular rifle are a little different than the AR, um, but it's certainly there. I mean, the mags lock up nice and tight. Uh, your charging handle's more of a blowback style. Mm -hmm. Just there it is. Um, that can be changed out. too. 
What's that? Ambidextrous too. It is ambidextrous. Yep. Um, you could put a uh, ambidextrous safety in this gun if you wanted to. Uh, it'll take all your standard AR-15 fire control mm -hmm. groups. So if you want to run your Geisley trigger or something nice like that, you can do it. Uh, finally, this gun is topped off with the Vortex Spark II. Um, this particular gun with subs is extremely quiet. You know, I would compare it to, I, we were out shooting the 1022 a little bit earlier with my uh, Liberty Regulator and uh, you know, I, I held the bolt closed on it and really all you can hear is the sound of the round striking your target. I mean, oh, that's God. it. And surprisingly enough, with this long barrel, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe the bullet's dragging a little bit and slowing down even more because I mean, these are like starting load subs that I'm hand loading for these things. I'd be but curious to compare apples to apples, like once this one has the same barrel mm -hmm. length as your G9. Yep, and run the same suppressor on there and actually just kind of run them side by side, you know, Correct. for the most part. But Absolutely. it was really, really quiet. I mean, very yeah. quiet. Oh, I know. 1020, too quiet. So, um, you know, these rifles you see on the table, although some of them are SBRs and they are, you know, Form 1 guns, this should give you a pretty solid example of what we feel is a, is a nice, well-rounded 9 millimeter. Uh, you know, whether it's a 9 millimeter carbine you're looking for, a short barrel rifle candidate, a suppressor host. Uh, we always have a wild card. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one here to show you because I don't own one yet, but the SIG MPX, I think, definitely deserves to be in this running. It's a popular gun. I mean, there's a lot of people that really love the SIG MPX. And, yep. I mean, you know, we, we've shot it and played around with it a lot, and we've actually gotten the chance to shoot one suppressed quite a bit. And, you know, like I said, I, to be honest with you, I, I think between the two, between the MPX and the Scorpion, I think the Scorpion is a better uh, suppressor host. Uh, uh, All-around better gun. Yeah, it's got some good points and some bad That's points. That's debatable. Same, the yeah. same thing with the MPX, but if you're looking for just a 9mm suppressor host, I mean, you know, that thing's hard to beat. Especially for the cost. Yep. I, I would say that out of all the guns that are on this table right now, yeah, you would be pretty dang hard pressed to beat the Scorpion mm -hmm. or the JR in terms of cost. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at cost versus what you're getting in the way of features. The JR, if you're wanting more of an AR-15 ergonomic and an AR-15 look, the JR is very, very hard to beat well, for the money. Think if about you're wanting it. something collapsible, something tiny, mm -hmm. I mean, the Keltec Sub 2000s right up your alley. If you're wanting, you know, suppressor host slash SBR candidate, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of where this all well, comes. Well, think down. about like, you know, trying to find something that's that doesn't gas you out, that suppresses very well, doesn't have a lot of port noise, that sort of thing. No T handle for gas to leak out of. This thing is a great host. Yep. Nothing on the backside for anything to leak out of. Yep. Great suppressor host. I mean, it'll work with pretty much anything you throw in it. The Sub 2000, haven't shot one of those suppressed yet, but, but I can imagine. I would imagine with that heavy bolt mm -hmm. though, the, see the mass, it's a blowback. So the mass on a blowback bolt has to be relatively, you know, heavy. It's gonna be pretty because heavy. Because not only does it need to stay closed long enough for the firing cycle to complete, but the combination of forces between the mass of the bolt carrier and the power of the recoil mm -hmm. spring all equate to how soon that gun is going to unlock and when you're getting additional back pressure from a suppressor you generally like technically in this mp5 i'm supposed to be running different rollers in it for running a suppressor because of the increased back pressure it is a delayed roller blowback firearm mm -hmm. which means that the rollers kind of have everything to do with everything from headspace to recoil bearing uh, surfaces mm -hmm. in the receiver as well as when the bolt actually drives to the rear when pressures reach a certain point. So that's why it's always important to check bolt gap and uh, roller geometry on your MP5. And as these things wear out, you take the rollers and you get bigger and bigger and bigger until you just can't get any bigger on then the rollers. Then you gotta change your barrel. Then you just, well no, you replace the gun. I mean, it's no. really, there really is no easy way to change a barrel on an MP5. Not very, e not simply. Well, when It could be done, but there, Remember, guys, the MP5 was made to be manufactured, used, and disposed of. It, it's hmm. like an AK. It wasn't ever really meant to be easily, like, the barrels and everything like that were meant to go a really long time, and the barrel life on them was meant to wear along with the roller replacements to where by the time you changed out rollers in your gun to the point where you can't get any bigger rollers in it, by that time your barrel shot out, but honestly, you're probably talking you're, what forty thousand rounds. You're talking, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're talking like some obscene amount of rounds, like a lot of rounds. And at that point, you may even start to develop anomalies in the receiver, such as stretching, cracking, to the point where the gun probably needs to be hmm. replaced anyway. You so, want to put that to the test? Uh, no, not with my <laughs> gun. Now, if Zenith wants to bring one down, we might. But 
Out of all these different platforms, <laughs> I, I think that maybe we kind of lay things out in a way that I, I believe makes it pretty clear on, mm -hmm. you know. Well, what I was getting at with like the, the, the blowback and such is, sure. you know, like my AR without a T handle on here, you're not getting blowback in the face. The CZ doesn't have anything like that. The yep. MPX has got that traditional T handle style charging handle and gas just comes all out of that thing. I have to you say know? too, it's awkward. I mean, it's awkward to operate, especially on like, okay, say you're running a handgun version of the MPX. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's any buffer back there yep. to, to run. So, now you can get the arm brace for them, yep. for, the, for the MPX, you but get the adapters. it's not like there's any type of actual buffer that needs to be there, but when you when you charge it and you pull that charging handle to the rear, it's like there's nothing there. It's just space under and it. To me, it just feels awkward. It's it's strange to operate. The, it is. The manual of arms, although familiar in many ways, is almost unfamiliar, especially in pistol form. I think that with some minor design changes, that MPX could could be way way better. Oh yeah, I don't doubt it. I mean, it's just I remember see, seeing that pistol and shooting that pistol that they had out the silence go shoot recently. That thing was just a smoke bucket. I mean, just, just got a mind. Uh, it's, it's a neat gun, and I do like it, and I do want to own one, but, you know, I, I think that maybe finding, like, an aftermarket, um, like those Gas Buster mm -hmm. charging handles. They might that have something to be like that sealed. That. Maybe you could get something like a, a well, charging handle that helps kind of seal in the gas. Remember, that bit. charging handle is proprietary. It's a tiny little guy. So maybe SIG mm -hmm. will come out with something. Or yeah, they'll I would imagine they will. Most of those companies, they, they realize when something needs to be changed, mm -hmm. and they'll generally fix it. So... Guys, there's your uh, top five carbines, and this also mm -hmm. encompasses suppressor hosts and mm -hmm. SBR hosts. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We had a lot of fun making it. It's always fun to talk about things like this, especially when, you know, these firearms here rep represent a certain amount of, of you know, kind of uh, investment, okay, and various investments investment. of, of different types. I mean, and the purposes of each of these can kind of lend themselves to different things depending mm -hmm. on what you're looking to do. So hopefully this kind of encompassed that idea a good mm -hmm. bit. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We appreciate the support and uh, many more videos on the way. Uh, we, we enjoy being the, uh, the top uh, five guns channel. I mean, we, we really do a lot of stuff with the top five concept. Uh, we've gotten a lot of support for this idea. A lot of these ideas come from you guys. Mm -hmm. So anytime you see something uh, come up, when you want to see a five guns video, let us know and uh, we'll get to it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take it easy.